Pranamal Glorish to Srila Prabhupada and all glorish to Gurudev. This is Radha from Baltimore. Hare Krishna Radha Mataji Dhanavaj Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. All glorish to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining the call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanavaj Pranam, Jai Srila Prabhupada. I'm Kalpana from uh, Florida. Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanavaj Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. All glorish to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Mataji, for joining the call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri Prabhupada and Guru Dev. This is Neil Madhav Das from Charlotte. Hare Krishna, Neil Madhav Prabhuji, Dhanavaj Pranam. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for joining the call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Mataji, Dhanavad Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj ki jaya, this is Ram Kumar from Philadelphia. Hare Krishna, Ram Kumar Prabhuji, Dhanavad Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much Prabhuji for joining the call, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, this is Radha Tamur Das and Atma Maya from Austin, Texas, please accept our humble obeisances, all glories to Guru Maharaj, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all the simple devotees, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Radha Damodar Prabhuji and Atma Maya Mataji, Dandavaj Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much Prabhuji and Mataji for joining the call. Hare Krishna. Welcoming all of you to the Bhakti Sangha conference call. Today we are very fortunate to have His Grace Amarinda Prabhuji. Prabhuji is on the auspicious day of Sharad Purnama is going to cover and enlighten us on the topic of the special topic Gopi Keep. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, are you present on the call, Prabhu? Yes, Mataji. Dandavad Pranam, Jai Srila Prabhupada. Very happy to be Prabhu. with all the devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavad Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for giving your valuable time and association to us this morning and enlightening on the special topic. I'll hand over the call to you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Yeah, Vardhana Mataji, Sita Priti Mataji has the short, short introduction. Yeah, uh, Sita Priti mm. Mataji, you can take out the call, Mataji. Hi, Krishna Mataji. Uh, Thank you, Mataji. My request is uh, if maybe we can just continue <laughs> in the interest of time, <laughs> if that is okay. We can skip the introduction and maybe if, if that is okay. <laughs> no, no, Prabhu, we, we are not going to take too much time, Mataji. <laughs> Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you so much for giving your valuable time and association for us. So, introduction of uh, Amrindra Prabhu. Amrindra Prabhu is a Siksha disciple of His Holiness Radha Govind Das Goswami Maharaj, who is a senior disciple of Srila Prabhupada, very well known for his classes on the Srimad Bhagavatam. With a sincere heart, Prabhuji expresses his heartfelt gratitude to His Holiness Bhakti Swaru Damodar Swami for being a very strong pillar in his life, motivating and guiding him. Academically, Amrindra Prabhu is a master's in electrical engineering from the University of Massachusetts and spiritually holds a Bhakti Shastri degree from Mayapur. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for giving your valuable time and association. I hand over the call to you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. My, my special gratitude to Shama Gauri Mataji for um, very affectionately and lovingly allowing me to serve this morning. Actually, my... Uh, my obeisances to Her Grace Radha Bhava Mataji. She was supposed to serve this call, um, but we had a we had a lot of issues with the storm here in Atlanta, um, and so many things happened. And she was also preoccupied with other things. So my my gratitude to Mataji that uh, somehow I got this um, opportunity to serve the Vaishnavas on the on the holy auspicious occasion of Sharat Purnima. This happens to be. Uh, the sampal, the Sankalpatiti, the day where the Sankalpa, the vows are taken for the month of Kartik. So we know Purnima is the last day of the month. And uh, the month of Kartik starts from tomorrow, which is Pratipad. But uh, for, all, uh, uh, for all practical purposes, the Vrat is taken today and, and devotees start. Some Gaudiya Vaishnavas even start the Vrat of Kartik from Ekadashi, the previous one, four days ago. So in this way, we generally do it from Purnima up to the next Purnima. That's one month like that. So very grateful for this opportunity. It's certainly a, a very lofty topic. 
uh, Sharad Purnima is the night when Krishna played the flute and he welcomed all the gopis of Brindavan. Um, so I am utterly unqualified. I have no, um, uh, no qualification. And uh, generally we, um, in, in our parampara, we generally don't uh, speak. Uh, it's not that we boycott, <laughs> as Prabhupada says. Prabhupada says we don't boycott the gopis. But we generally don't speak about the gopis publicly. But this is not a public forum. This is our family. These are uh, very sincere, fired up, um, and, and serious practitioners of bhakti, chanting and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam every day. So this is not uh, a general um, audience that we are addressing. This is a very uh, cream audience of devotees who are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and chanting the holy name every day. And also as far as Tithi is concerned today, Sharat Purnima. So therefore, uh, as far as the, the assembly is concerned, as far as the, the Tithi is concerned, it is all pointing towards Radha and Krishna. So therefore, it will be very apt if we can speak and hear something from Srimad Bhagavatam, of course, supported uh, by different uh, commentaries of the Acharyas and different other works uh, of the six Goswamis. So in today's discussion, we will be hearing mainly the, uh, the, the, sub the, the subject matter of the Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto. But then we will also be hearing from other works of Rupa Goswami and Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami and, and other Acharyas with different references. So that seems to be the, the idea for today. We just uh, finished with the, um, the celebration of Purushottam Adikmas, who represents Krishna. And we are on the, on the doorstep of entering <laughs> the month of Kartik, which is the month of Radharani. So again, even as far as the months are concerned, it is the best time to discuss about Radha and Krishna. Of course, every day is best. Tadvinam durdinam manye mega chadam na durdinam yaddinam krishna samlapam katha piyusha varjitam. That day is not a bad day when it's gloomy and the sun is covered with thick clouds. That day is not a bad day. But that day when there are no discussions of Krishna. Yaddinam krishna samlapam katha piyusha varjitam. That day which is bereft of the nectar of Krishna Katha. That day is a bad day. So therefore, of course, every day is good for Radha and Krishna, but specifically, as far as audience is concerned, as far as the specific Tithi is concerned, as far as the months meeting, Purushottam Adikmas and Kartikmas meeting, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to hear about Radha and Krishna, who are our Sadhya Vastu. Uh, the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna is what, as Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we aspire lifetime after lifetime. So keeping all these introductory points, philosophical points in mind, we start our discussion today. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Hakada Mahiyam Dadati Svapadantikam Namam Vishnupadaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gaurvani Pracharani Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschakti Deshatarani Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna So today we will be hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 10 Chapter 29 this is entitled Krishna and the Gopis Meet. This is into the first chapter of the Rasa Panchadhyay, text 18. So to quickly uh, repeat the, the reference of the text, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, chapter 29, text 18. Krishna has uh, played uh, the flute and the gopis have assembled in the middle of the night. And in that context, Krishna is speaking this verse. Shri Bhagavan Uvaja Swagatam Vo Mahabhagaha Priyam Kim Karavani Vaha Vrajasyana Mayam Kachit Bruta Gamanakaranam Swagatam Vo Mahabhagaha Priyam Kim Karavani Vaha Vrajasya namayam kache bruta 
गमन कारण स्वागत ओ महाभागा प्रिय किणी वह व्रजस्या कश्चि भ्रूता गमन कारण translation and purport by the sincere disciples and followers of his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shrila prabhupad prabhupad ki jai translation lord krishna said o oh, most fortunate ladies welcome what may i do to please you is everything well in vraja please tell me the reason for your coming here purport lord krishna knew perfectly well why the gopis had come in fact he had called them with the romantic melodies of his flute so krishna was simply teasing the gopis by asking them why have you come here so quickly <laughs> is something wrong in town why have you come here anyway what do you want the gopis were krishna's young lovers and therefore these questions certainly bewildered them for they had responded to krishna's call with the simple mentality of enjoying conjugal love with him so this is uh, the verse for today shrimad bhagavatam ki jai very very beautiful verse and uh, when the context is understood then the beauty and the appreciation of this verse uh, goes deeper and deeper so dear devotees let us uh, start our discussion we will have a discussion for about uh, 75 to 80 minutes 1 hour 15 1 hour 20 minutes and then we can open up the floor for a few minutes of Um, reflections and questions and queries so our very beloved chachi nandan gaurahari shri chaitanya mahaprabhu when he was um, traveling in south india he heard some brahmanas chanting some mantras they were chanting chintamani prakara sadma sukalpa vriksha laksha vrteshu surabhira bhipalayantam लक्ष्मी सहस्रशत संभ्रम सेव्यमानम गोविंद मारि पुरुषम तमहं भजामि सो श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु ही ही हर्ड द ब्राह्मणस चैंटिंग अ फ्यू प्रेयर्स एंड देन ही बिकेम एक्सटैटिक ही हर्ड दिस एंड ही आस्क्ड देम व्हाट इज दिस एंड वेयर वेयर आर दीस प्रेयर्स कमिंग फ्रॉम सो द ब्राह्मणस सेड दिस इज एक्चुअली द ब्रह्म संहिता brahma samhita this has actually been composed and given to the world by brahma ji himself of course we in iskon we know this because we are so used to chanting them during abhishek and and other uh, sacred uh, events in fact shila prabhupada in one purport of the bhagavatam says that offering prayers is such an integral part of the eternal um, spirit soul to krishna in loving relationship that one must daily offer prayers and then prabhupada gives two examples he says apart from the hari krishna maha mantra one can chant the namaste narasimha narasimha prayers which is famously called as the narasimha aarti in our society and the second is the brahma samhita prayers the chintamani prakara satma so chintamani prayers <laughs> so prabhupad emphasizes on the brahma samhita so shri chaitanya mahaprabhu when he was in south india he saw the brahmanas chanting these mantras and he asked them what mantras are these and you're chanting them so melodiously and the meanings are so deep i want to know so they said actually this is the brahma samhita shri chaitanya mahaprabhu felt so inspired by hearing this that he he made copies of it and when he came to jagannath puri he personally started doing book distribution he distributed these copies of the brahma samhita he gave it to swarup damodar he gave it to ramanand rai his personal associates and his personal uh, parikars or parshads his personal uh, servants and associates we could say confidential associates so he gave these copies of the brahma samhita to everyone and shri chaitanya mahaprabhu personally saw that the brahma samhita is such a deep uh, expression of uh, description of shri krishna very deep descriptions of krishna in braj रामादि मूर्तिषु कला नियम नानावतारम अकरोद भुवनेशु किंतु कृष्ण स्वयं समभवत परम कुमान्यो गोविंद मादि पुरुषम तमहम भजाम इन द ब्रह्म संहिता ब्रह्मा जी सेज दे आर ऑल द डिफरेंट विष्णु मूर्तिज दे अपियर बट दे आर ओनली कला दे आर इदर अंश दे आर इदर द एक्सपेंशन और अ पोर्शन और कला द पोर्शन ऑफ द पोर्शन बट द रूट 
the avatari, not the avatar, but the avatari, the source of all avatars. Krishna swayam samabhavat paramapumanya. It is Sri Krishna in Vrindavan. Hmm? So when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would read these verses, he would feel so ecstatic. He would feel uh, uh, so inspired. This verse also says, Leela uh, itena bhuvanani jayajya jashram. Then when the, um, when the pastimes of Krishna are meditated, Krishna appears in the heart. Ananda chinmaya rasa mataya manasu yeh prani naam pratiphalam smaratam upetya. Those prani, those living beings who smaratam, who remember Krishna. Leela itena bhuvanani jayajya jashram. The leelas, they reflect and they manifest in the consciousness of the listener and the meditator. Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajani. And in this way, they conquer the ocean of repeated birth and death by the blessings of the, that meditation of Sri Krishna. So this Brahma Samhita has many, many beautiful verses. And in fact, our very beloved um, Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj um, has given a very beautiful series on, on Brahma Samhita. And many other senior leaders in ISKCON also. But I, I remember evidently hearing the classes of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj. And Maharaj was explaining that how these different verses have such deep meaning. Like, Yam Krodha Kama Sahaja Pranayadi Bhiti Vatsalya Moha Guru Gaurava Sevya Bhavai Sanchintya Tasya Sadrishim Tanuma Purete Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bhajan. Another verse of Brahma Samhita, it says that Yam Krodha Kama Sahaja Pranaya Bhiti Vatsalya Moha Guru Gaurava Sevya Bhavai One can serve Krishna in any rasa and any bhav. Like uh, one can connect to Krishna in anger. One can connect to Krishna in um, kamat, snehat, bhayat, krodat, yatha bhakti shware manaha. One can connect to Krishna in lust, transcendental lust, of course. Prema iva goparamanam, kama iti agama pratha. The, the Shastras describe Chaitanya Charitamrit, Kaviraj Goswami quotes that whenever the word kama has been used in terms of Krishna and the gopis, it is not the lust of this world between a boy and a girl. It is transcendental lust, which means um, prema eva goparamana. This is only prem, which is given another word as kama. So one can serve Krishna in transcendental lust like the gopis. Sahaja mm. pranaya in, in um, sakhiras or vatsalya moha guru gaur, vatsalya ras. One can serve Krishna in sakhiras, madhuri ras, mm. vatsalya ras, any of the rasas. Guru gaurava sevya bhava in dasya ras. So that verse talks about how to connect with Krishna, especially in Braj, what are the different prominent moods. Then another verse of the, the Brahma Samhita mentions, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavita Vi Stavirya Eva Nijarupa Taya Kalabi Golokam Eva Nivasati Akhilatma Bhuto Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bacha. That verse says that uh, Radharani is Ananda <laughs> and Krishna is Chinmay, Chit, Chit Shakti. So when Radha and Krishna meet, the rasa that manifests, the Madhuri rasa that manifests is called Ananda Chinmaya rasa. <laughs> the the Shringar rasa. The Samarpaitum Unnata Ujjwala rasa Amsva Bhakti Shriyam. That Adi ras, That uh, Jaya Jaya Ujjwala rasa Sarva rasa Sar. Parakiya Bhave Jaha Brajate Prachar. That original rasa of Madhuri Prem is called Ananda Chinmaya rasa. The meeting of Radha and Krishna. And that same rasa, it explodes outside. Hmm? Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavi Tavi Tavirya Eva Nijarupa Taya Kalabhi. That Radha and Krishna, when they meet and their love explodes, then Radharani takes different forms in the form of Lalita, Vishaka, Induleka, Tunga, Vidya, Ranga, Devi, Sudevi, Chitra, Champaklata, etc. So, which means the gopis, according to this verse of the Brahma Samhita, they are not ordinary living beings. They are not ordinary jivas. They are not even extraordinary jivas. Radharani is Krishna's own form. Hmm? Mama Eva. Paurusham Rupam, Gopika Manamohanam. When Radharani was asked, who is Krishna? <laughs> Radharani says, Mama Eva Paurusham Rupam. This Krishna is me only. There's no difference. Mama Eva Paurusham Rupam, Gopika Manamohanam. This Krishna who plays the flute and attracts the hearts of the gopis is Mama Eva Paurusham Rupam. This is me alone in a male form. So Radharani, Radha Krishna Nityaiche Ekahi Swarup, Lilarasa Aswadite Dhari Dui Rup. Hmm? Uh, how beautiful. Kaviraj Goswami said, Radha and Krishna are eternally one. But Leela Rasa Aswadite Dhari Duviru. They have just accepted two forms for the explosion of the Shringar Rasa. Of very sweet, wonderful, transcendental romantic mood 
of Madhurya Prem. Anyonya Vilasarasa Aswadhanakari. Just to taste this Madhurya Rasa, one has become two, Kaviraj Goswami says. So therefore, Radharani is Krishna's own form. And then when she expands further, they are the gopis. So this verse in the Brahma Samhita says that the, the meeting of Radha and Krishna, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, when it is Nijarupataya Kalabi, when it expands outside, it's like a child playing with in, 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 a, in a room filled with mirrors. You see a baby, a little a child crawls and gets into a room with mirrors. It gets so excited to see its own reflections. Srila <laughs> Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur gives this example for Krishna's Rasa dance. He says when Krishna's dancing with the gopis, one Krishna between two gopis, oh, he's so excited because it is his own Shakti, which is Radharani, who's expanding. So it's actually Krishna dancing with himself. <laughs> and he's feeling so excited. So there is uh, no, no presence of uh, Prakrita Kaam. It is a Prakrita Kaam. This is transcendental presence of love. So in this way, I was mentioning that the Brahma Samhita has so many beautiful uh, philosophical truths with so much rasa laden verses. The verses are dripping rasa, vraja rasa, hmm? vraja prem. But at the same time, they're very deep in philosophy. And finally, we see the last two verses of this chapter, the fifth chapter of the Brahma Samhita, which is available to us. Uh, it gives a detailed description of Goloka Vrindavan. And that is like the entry point of today's discussion. That's the introduction to today's discussion. This is why we are entering uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and the works of our Acharyas through the Brahma Samhita, which was given by Brahmaji and commented upon by Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur. So that is the, the way we enter into uh, these pastimes with, with the mood of reverence. Srila hmm. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to say, that the way to enter Goloka Vrindavan is not by the feet, but by the head. <laughs> we enter Goloka Vrindavan on our head, not on our feet. So therefore, the, the mood of Tattva first. Siddhanta baliya chitte na kara alas. Iha haite krishna lage sudrida manas. First, when philosophical truths are well established, then pastimes will flow with so much sweetness. So the last two verses of this chapter we see. Very beautiful description of Goloka Vrindavan. Shriya Kanta Kanta Parama Purusha Kalpa Tarabo Druma Bhumish Chintamani Ganamani Toyam Amritam Katha Ganam Natyam Gamanam Vamshi Presaki Chidanandam Jyotihi Paramapi Tadaswadhyam Apicha. We chant these verses um, the Brahma, uh, during the, the Brahma Samhita verses, especially the last two are like devotees chant with so much enthusiasm. Shriya Kanta Kanta Parama Purusha. <laughs> we chant that during Abhishek's in our temples. So we all are aware of these verses. But these verses have very deep meaning. So what is the meaning? Shriya kanta kanta parama purusha kalpatarabha. This means that in there are innumerable Vaikuntha planets. And in every planet, we see one uh, presence of Lakshmi Narayan. Vishnu and the eternal concept of Vishnu. That is Lakshmi Devi. So every Vaikuntha planet has one Lakshmi. But Goloka Brindavan has millions and millions of Lakshmis put together, but they're all residing in the mood that I am not Lakshmi. I am simply a, a cowherd girl. <laughs> they have this transcendental abhiman, this transcendental pride that I am nothing, but I am just a Brajagopi. Brajagopi, that's all. So in Vaikuntha, every Vaikuntha planet, only one Lakshmi Devi. And that too, she's, she's completely in her position that I am uh, Vishnu Patni Namastubhyam. I am the Vishnu Patni. I am the uh, eternal consort of um, Lord Vishnu. Tava Suprabhata Maravinda Lochane Bhavatu Prasanna Mukhachandra Mandale Vidhi Shankarendra Vanita Virarchite Vrisha Shaila Natha Daite Dayanidhe Vrisha Shaila Natha Daite in the Venkateshwara Suprabhatam, Lakshmi Devi has been addressed as Vrusha Shaila Natha Daite. Oh, beloved lover, Daita of Vrusha Shaila Natha, of the Lord of this universe, or the Saptagirin Tirumala Tirupati. He who is the Lord of Tirumala, which is our Venkateshwara Swami, hmm? Daite. Oh, eternal beloved of that Supreme Lord. But millions of uh, Lakshmis put together are residing in Brajmandal. But they're all living as simple cowherd girls. They're having this mood. And Vaikuntha, 
may have a few wish fulfilling trees <laughs> but in brindavan every tree is wish fulfilling tree kalpataravo <laughs> like for example you can go to a tree in braj and ask for a garland and the tree will give us a garland but the braj gopis never go to the tree and ask for a garland what do they do they go to the tree and they go to different uh, bushes and different creepers and gardens in kunch and they collect flowers with their own hands and then they sit and then they make their own garland <laughs> the mood of braja is such that there are kalpavriksha trees everywhere and we can just ask for whatever we want and the tree fulfills and we can serve krishna but their love is so deep that all it's a kalpavriksha tree they don't ask anything to a kalpavriksha tree this is kalpataravo they don't they don't ask the sweetness of braja is such that it eclipses the consideration of all wish fulfilling trees um, and asking the trees for the fulfillment and also all the cows in braja they're all kama dhenu they're all kama dhenu which means kama means desire and dhenu means a cow which means all desires are fulfilled by the cow which means you can go to a cow and ask for butter <laughs> and the cow will fulfill you'll just give butter <laughs> don't ask me how but he'll just give butter but the brajwasis don't go to a cow and ask for butter and braj what do they do they milk the cow <laughs> they physically they milk the cow and then they let it transform into yogurt and then they churn that yogurt and get butter govind damo dharma dhaveti govind damo dharma dhaveti bilva mangala thakur has said that बिक्रे तु कामा किल गोप कन्या मुरारी पादार पित चेत वृत्ति दध्यादिकोहवशाद वोचत गोविंद दामो धर्माधवेति दट द गोपीज आर चर्निंग दे आर मिल्किंग द खाव and then later they churn the yogurt to get butter and they're singing the names of krishna yani yani ha geeta ni tad bala charitani cha dadhi nirmantane kale smaranti tanya gayat they are remembering krishna's names and krishna's form and krishna's beautiful sweet pastimes and they're churning so the point is although the cow can give butter they are taking milk and then they are uh, making different milk preparations out and then uh, toyam amritam the verse says toyam water is like nectar so the understanding is if water is like nectar what is it, what is nectar in braja like <laughs> if water drops are like nectar drops then what are nectar streams actually like how do we understand how do they look like similarly katha ganam their words are as if they're singing the brajvasis are such that they're speaking words but it seems katha ganam the katha the words seem like beautifully beautifully bound up uh, songs in classical ragas and um, katha ganam natyam gamanam gamanam their their steps are like natyam like dancing so if their words are like singing then what is their singing like <laughs> that's the implication if the words are like a song then what's the song like and if the steps are like dancing then what's the dancing looking like how beautiful how beautiful and then it says katha ganam natyam gamanam and then vamshi priya sakhi very deep vamshi priya sakhi why vamshi priya sakhi many meanings are there but a couple of meanings here <clears throat> priya sakhi priya sakhi is a messenger so when um, krishna wants to meet shrimati radharani then he has to send a messenger to give his message so who is the messenger who keeps radha and krishna together or oh, that's the flute krishna plays the flute and communicates to radha rani so then who is the doot who is the messenger who is the priya sakhi vamshi priya sakhi krishna plays the flute and sends the messenger in the form of the flute sound the song of the flute to attract the heart of radha rani at the same time the priya sakhi vamshi priya sakhi is a very strong transcendental envy expressed by radha rani गोप्यूषलोपी 
he's a this this flute god knows what the flute has done in its previous life it is a male and still get so much association of krishna and we are female and we still don't get we are gopis and we don't get but this being a male never leaves krishna when krishna is with the gopis that time also the flute is there when krishna is with the gopas that time also the flute is there when krishna is at home that time also the flute is there when krishna is jumping into the the yamuna he tucks the flute to his waist and that time also the flute is there and the the ultimate limit is even when he is resting and sleeping he is having the flute in his hand which means this is such a priya sakhi this this krishna never leaves this sakhi and this sakhi never leaves krishna actually this is a male vamshi is a male <laughs> name it's a it's a male flute so it's sarcastic it must be sakha priya sakha but radharani says this is as attached to krishna as if priya sakhi as if it's a very dear sakhi that krishna is always holding her hand in the form of holding the flute and embracing her in the form of tucking her tucking the flute to the waist and then offering his kiss by always playing on the flute so in this way it seems as if krishna has a lot of affection for the flute and look this flute has so many faults it's hollow and it has so many holes anything that has holes and is hollow is considered not to be perfect it's not considered to be first class but this sakhi has so many faults and krishna also has so many faults <laughs> transcendental faults because he's very crooked he's standing crooked he's glancing crooked he's not glancing like ramachandra he's glancing from the corner of his eyes and he's talking also very crooked his flute sound is also very crooked his past tenses are also very crooked ahi riva gatir premna swabhava kutilo bhavet rupa goswami says krishna's past tenses move like a snake he wants to go ahead but it moves crooked like this <laughs> in transcendental ways this is this is for uh, those devotees who understand that uh, krishna is our lord and then this is not a criticism but this is transcendental glorification it is like sometimes mother yashoda saying krishna there's no one like you she wants to say oh krishna there's no one like you <laughs> but in front of other sakis who are complaining she will say krishna there's no one like you as if she is reprimanding but she is actually glorifying so here vamshi priya sakhi so in this verse of the brahma samhita we say that katha ganam natyam gamanam vamshi priya sakhi that if the words are like a song what is the song like and if if the steps are like dance then what is the dancing like and if the flute is the priya sakhi imagine if the singing dancing and the flute come together katha ganam natyam gamanam vamshi priya sakhi dear devotees this is the entrance to the rasa leela <laughs> if the words are like a song and the steps are like dancing imagine the song and the dancing put together with the vamshi being the stimulant how beautiful so chaitanya mahaprabhu used to have ecstatic symptoms when he would read the brahma samhita and chidanandam jyoti and then like we previously mentioned what is this chidanandam jyoti it means krishna uh, ananda means radharani so when they meet chidananda jyoti the light hmm, or the moon under which the rasa leela takes place the sun under which braj leela takes place during the daytime and the moon under which the nishanta leela takes place at night the sun and the moon are not the illuminating factors for krishna's pastimes we know this from the bhagavad gita natat bhasayate suryo na shashanko na pavaka yad gatva na nivartante tad dhamam paramam mama krishna says in the bhagavad gita neither the sun nor the moon illuminate my planet then where is the jyoti coming from brahma says chid anandam jyoti that jyoti that light comes from the meeting of radha and krishna their meeting explodes and gives the light the effulgence of madhuri rasa and it's not some uh, prakrita rasa of this world it is not as people who don't know any shastra those uh, political people uh, and materialistic people and lusty people who are non devotional in their mind they see any boy and girl coming together or they have uh, you know some some boys and some girls together immediately they will say oh that is krishna walking with his gopis and they think it's a very big joke and very nice comparison that they are making but it's actually just an expression of their ignorance in this fact so brahma ji is saying when radha and krishna meet chidanandam jyoti it's like illuminating light which lights up the whole braj mandal and this is chidanandam jyoti paramapi tad aswadhyam api cha it is the highest truth and it makes everything relishable so in this way this this place has been described and then the last words also says 
क्षीरादी श्रवती सुरभिभ्य सुमहा निमेशाध्याको वा व्रजति नी समय भजे श्वेत द्वीप तमहम इह गोलोक विदंतस्ते सत क्षिति विरल चाराक दीपये द लास्ट वर्ड डिस्क्राइब्स दैट दिस गोलोक वृंदावन इज सच दैट काम देनु मिल्क इज फ्लोइंग एंड टाइम डजेंट इवन एक्ट इट्स एन इटर्नल प्लेस where all seasons are there only to serve rath and krishna and time doesn't act on them their desire dictates the movement of the seasons and no one grows old there are of course a few old people in brajalila like you see krishna's grandfather parjanya maharaj <laughs> and radharani's grandmother mukura devi so they are old but what does that mean although they are old in the past time they all look young and fresh and energetic which means if the old people look young and uh, fresh and energetic what do the young people look like and what does krishna and radharani and the gopis look like so imagine dear devotees this place this rasalila has been described in the brahma samhita hmm? that triya kanta ha kanta there is one kanta but there are many kanta the gopis hmm? triya kanta ha kanta parama purusha kalpa taravo he is the greatest personality and this is the place where every tree is a wish fulfilling tree every cow is a kamadenu cow every just particle of braj is chintamani put you know millions and millions of touchstones put together and every word is a song every step is dance and the flute is the uh, inducing rasa inducing stimulant the uddipana and chidanandam jyoti hi madhuri rasa is the adhi rasa the adhi rasa that's the prominent backbone of braj mandal and in this uh, beautiful wonderful place called as bhaje uh, shweta dweepam tamaham ih goloka miti this place is called as goloka or shweta dweepa that place which is transcendently pure that all the vedas and all the sages put together they can't realize it and what to speak of understand it and what to speak of speaking about it what to speak of experiencing it not possible this this is why mukta naam api siddhanam narayana parayana sudurlabh prashant atma koti shwapi mahamune bahu naam janma naam ante jnanavan maam prapadhyate vasudev sarvam iti sa mahatma sudurlabh manushyanam sahasreshu kaschit yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kaschin maam veti tatvata krishna gives praman in the bhagavad gita how difficult it is to understand him so therefore dear devotees this we have why we started off with this is to understand that this description of krishna's rasa dance or the 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 event of sharad purnima where krishna plays the flute as gopinath shri man rasa rasarambhi vamshi vatatata sthitah karshan venu swanair gopi gopinath shri astuna this is a very very exalted beautiful wonderful transcendently pure purifying and sweet description in the shastra we should not misunderstand so this is the the radha krishna madhuri rasa is the jyoti and the flute is the stimulant they're singing and dancing is transcendental and all of this is happening with the gopis who are non different from radharani and this is happening in braja which is shweta dweep and it is happening uh, under the kalpavriksha trees <laughs> the kadamba and the tamal trees on the banks of the yamuna which is not water but toyam amritam which is nectar flowing chidanand bhano sadanand suno as shri chaitanya mahaprabhu described this yamuna maharani is um, is the aganam lavitri she is the one who destroys all the um, sins she is the greatest uh, purifier so therefore jaya jaya uh, shri rasa mandala jaya jaya radha sham jaya jaya rasa lila sarva manoram jaya jaya jwala rasa sarva rasa sar parakhiya bhave jaha brajate praja we find in the famous uh, jay radhe jay krishna jay vrindavan um, song these very beautiful tattvas are described in a very sweet way so dear devotees now after this uh, philosophical understanding we will enter the description for the remaining time that we have in chapter 29 the rasa dance begins the the entrance into the rasa dance begins in canto 10 and the first verse describes bhagavan apitaratri sharadotfulla mallika vikshantu manaschakre yogamaya mupashrita this is badarayani vacha this is shukadev goswami speaking the son of the great vyasadev and bhagavan apitaratri the supreme lord being the supreme lord himself he is the greatest renunciant he is the greatest uh, enjoyer and 
he's the akhila rasamrita murti he's the embodiment the personification of all rasas all emotions although he's completely atma ramascha munayo he is also completely apta kam atma ram completely self satisfied he frolics in his own internal potency still api taratri that night or nights taharatri you know he on 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 those nights which means there were many nights put together because the night of the sharad purnima night the night of the rasalila it lasted for as long as brahma's night so therefore taratri many nights came together to serve radha krishna that night so krishna decided hmm, to perform his rasa dance and this is not uh, something uh, which is uh, mundane why immediately next line it says sharad utfulla mallika that during the autumn season sharad season utfulla mallika the mallika flowers completely blossomed now dear devotees this is not natural because the mallika doesn't blossom in autumn <laughs> it's it's not natural mm, springing time natural blooming and blossoming time is not the autumn season but because this is a super excellent pastime super excellent night super excellent great emotion in the heart of the supreme lord seasons are also coming to serve and supernatural changes extraordinary changes are seen so sharadot fulla mallika and then viksharantum manash chakre the supreme lord looked at the beauty of vrindavan and he decided in his heart manash chakre he decided mana means mind he decided with all conviction and determination what did he decide yogam ayam upashrita that tonight i will fulfill uh, the the innermost desire of all the rajagopis but the word used is yogam ayam upashrita meaning first meaning is in braja krishna is not the doer even radharani is not the doer who is the doer brinda devi is the doer and she is the yogamaya shakti therefore we sing tulsi arati and she say, we say seva adhikara diye koro nij dasi radha krishna seva pabo ei abhilashi je tumara sharana loy tara vanchha purna hoy kripa kori koro tare brinda vanavasi he tulsi rani you who bring radha and krishna together as yogamaya in braj you please accept me a ghatana ghatana prati asi shakti you can make impossible into possible and possible into impossible so the impossible thing is uh, for me to get radha and krishna's service but you can do the impossible into possible so you please give me shelter and we we worship tulsi rani so yogamaya mupashrita which means krishna let go of his supreme position and he took a back seat and let brinda devi as yogamaya shakti let her take over and decide this pastime also another meaning is according to the different prominent names of radharani in the radha upanishad there are 28 names of radharani and one out of those 28 is yogamaya so yogamaya upashrita when krishna decided on the night of sharad purnima that i will perform the rasa krida the rasa leela then what did he do he took complete shelter upashrita he took complete shelter of shrimati radharani <laughs> so therefore radharani and shri krishna are not the doers they just the ingredients and it is prem it is transcendental braja prem which is the doer which prinda uh, devi does so in this way this is the first verse of the the raspanchadhyay that although he is the supreme lord bhagavan apita ratri hi many nights came together sharadot fulla mallika the mallika flower started blossoming and the impossible became possible seasons were coming to serve viksharantum seeing this krishna manash chakra he decided now is the time yoga maya mupashita i will perform the rasalila but i will take complete shelter of radharani <laughs> this is a very beautiful uh perspective given by the gaudiya vaishnava acharyas so now let us decide what now let us discuss what happened we will discuss uh, this past time of course it's a very deep topic we can discuss all of this but we will hear it uh, from different angles of vision uh with respect to the words that i just mentioned how krishna took shelter of radharani on the night of sharad purnima before the rasalila and of of course the words that we read how krishna told the braja gopis that you should Uh, why have you come here in the middle of the night so we will try to combine them and weave in some stories given by rupa goswami uh, in ujwala nilamani and um, krishna das kaviraj goswami and other acharyas in different places so we will try to hear something now let's begin with the past time so krishna played his flute at night at vamshivat 
Vamshi Vat is a very famous pastime place in um, Leela Sthali in Braj Mandal on the banks of the Yamuna. When you go to Brindavan, we can go to Vamshi Vat. Of course, now Yamuna has moved her course so much. So it's not just on the banks, but near the Yamuna. So Krishna played his flute at night at Vamshi Vat. And the gopis heard it. And they did not think, oh, now I will be bewildered in Prem. Now I will give up my family. Now I will transgress dharma. The gopis did not think like that. They just heard Krishna's flute. And <laughs> without thinking anything, they didn't even remember they had a family. In fact, they didn't even remember their own name. They forgot their own identity and spontaneously ran to Krishna following the flute sound. It was almost like the flute sound was a thief who came and stole uh, a possession of their heart. And they ran behind the flute, flute sound to get their possession back. But that flute was Vamshi Priyasaki, was uniting Krishna with the gopis. Now, gopis are not uh, uh, women of this world. They are non different from Radharani. Bahu Kanta Vina Nahi Rasera Ulhas. Kaviraj Goswami, in the fourth chapter of uh, Adilila Chaitanya Charitamrit, very beautifully describes that different gopis manifest because of Radharani's inner desire to serve Krishna unlimitedly. Radharani thinks if one Radharani can please Krishna so much, imagine two Radharanis, imagine three Radharanis, imagine four Radharanis. And in this way, when Radharani expands, those are uh, the gopis of Vrindavan. So when Krishna played the flute as Gopinath at Bamshivat on the banks of the, um, the Yamuna, the gopis just ran. One gopi was making garland and she was actually, uh, you know, she had a needle in her hand and she was <laughs> making a garland. Nash, the flute sound of Krishna's uh, heart emotions entered her ear hole and jumped in the courtyard of her heart. She ran to Krishna with a needle in her hand. <laughs> imagine if someone comes running with a needle in, in their hand. You'll get scared. But imagine how absorbed the gopis would have been. She was making a garland. She didn't even put the needle down. She just ran with the needle. And another gopi was actually stirring milk. This is all given in the Bhagavatam. She was stirring milk. And as she heard uh, Krishna play the flute, she didn't even drop the spoon there, the stirring spoon. She ran with the spoon in her hand uh, to, to meet Krishna. Famous example. Another gopi was actually uh, applying kajal to her eye. And she heard Krishna's flute. And she had to stop till here. But she forgot where to stop. Where is the boundary? So she went on like this and went on and on and on and on and on and on. And then as the flute sound became so intoxicating, she ran to Krishna with kajal in one eye. <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 she completely became oblivious. She became completely stunned and, and, and ecstatic. She didn't even realize I have to put in the other eye also. She, she just went with one eye. And when Krishna saw mm -hmm. this gopi, kajal in one eye looked more beautiful than kajal in two eyes. Because that was an expression of how much she uh, was attached to Krishna. So Krishna decided, he looked at the gopi and said, oh, you have so much love for me that you even forgot to stop here. And yet at the same time, you forgot to <laughs> have some symmetry and some uniformity in your Shringa. Therefore, don't worry. Hey, Saki, Krishna took and he completed the Kajal by decorating her other eye. So in this way, Krishna, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, that those who are ananyas chintayantamam ye jana paryu pasate tesham nityabhi yuktanam yoga kshemam vaham yam. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, you just give your mind to me and be absorbed in me. I will give you what, I will preserve what you have and I will fill in what you lack. So here the gopi had this kajal. So Krishna kept it as it is, but she lacked here. So Krishna filled it up because she was ananya bhakta. How beautiful. The verses of Bhagavad Gita are like sutras which open up as pastimes in the Bhagavata. The, the philosophical truths in the Bhagavad Gita, to explain them, we find 18,000 verses of the Bhagavatam as pastimes to explain the sutras given in the Bhagavad Gita. So when Krishna is playing the flute and the gopis are running from all directions to Gopinath, what was Radharani's condition? Where was Radharani? As Gaudiya Vaishnavas, our focus is Radha Dasyam. Our focus is the lotus feet of Radharani. Srila Rupa Goswami describes that uh, uh, <clears throat> there are different kinds of gopis. And one very special category of gopi is called Radha Adik Sneha Gopi. That, that gopi or those sections of gopis, those different, uh, that class of gopis, that completely distinguished 
uh, class of gopis, that caliber of gopis, who are only living for the pleasure of the lotus feet of Radharani. They don't want anything. It's only Radha Dasyam. It's only the lotus feet of Radharani. Tavai vasmi, tavai vasmi, najivami, tvayavina, iti vidnyaya devi tvam nayamam charanantika. Just like our Raghuna Das Goswami used to chant in the Vilap Kusumanjali prayers. So Rupa Goswami describes that one category of gopis are those who are surrendered to the lotus feet of Radharani. And their mood is Radha Dasyam. And those, the, the um, gopis from that camp came down as the six Goswamis. Why? Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in this world to give Radha Dasyam, that very special quality of being selfless to the service of Radharani. So therefore, let us as Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the six Goswamis, try to hear this pastime from Radharani's perspective. Where was Radharani and what was her condition? Actually, we see Radharani right from childhood. She was very absorbed in Krishna. Completely absorbed in Krishna. Anything that she saw which was similar to Krishna's complexion, uh, she would have uh, sattvic bhavs in her body. Hair would stand on end and she would tremble. As we see in the pages of Chaitanya Charitamrit, Sriman Mahaprabhu, when he looked at Jagannath during the Rathyatra, Kaviraj Goswami describes Kanchana Sadrisha Deha Aruna Vasan Pulaka Ashru Kampa Sweda Tahate Bhushan. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Kanchana Sadrisha Deha. He was golden completely. And Aruna Vasan, he had saffron cloth. And what were his decorations? What were his ornaments on his body? Pulaka Ashru Kampa Sweda. Pulaka means hair stood on end. Ashru, torrents of sh rain shower in the form of tears came down from the clouds of Mahaprabhu's eyes, wetting the, the, the fertile field of her, of his <laughs> cheeks. Why I'm saying her is because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the mood of Radharani. So Pulaka, hair stood on end. Ashru, tears. Kampa, trembling. And Sweda, very beautiful pearl drop, drops like necklace falling off. It was like a pearl necklace, pearl drops, perspiration drops, sweat drops in the form of pearl drops coming down the face of Sriman Mahaprabhu. So Kaviraj Goswami says, Kanjana Sadrisha Deha Aruna Vasan Pulaka Ashru Kampa Sweda Tahate Bhushan. That Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstatic symptoms in the body were actually hinting towards Radharani's symptoms of ecstasy in her attachment to Krishna. So right from childhood, she had so much absorption in Krishna. Whenever she saw anything similar to Krishna's complexion, Radharani would tremble in happiness. Whether she saw a tamal tree or whether she saw the rumbling, the thundering, the lightning of a Megha Shyam, Navajaladhara Shyam, the freshly formed monsoon rain cloud, the lightning of the rain cloud resembled Krishna's Pitambar Dhoti. And the complexion of the rain cloud represented and, and reminded Radharani of the complexion of Krishna. And the thundering of the rain cloud reminded Radharani of Krishna's flute. So that rain cloud in itself was Krishna, complete Krishna, because <laughs> it also had a rainbow. And that represented the colors of Krishna's beautiful peacock feather. So Radharani would faint looking at the, peacock, uh, the, the cloud. And sometimes she would look at the blue throat of a peacock and she would remember Krishna. And sitting all alone, she would talk incoherently as if she's talking to herself. <laughs> because there was no one around. Why I'm saying as if? Because she was not talking to herself. She would have bursts of spurti, which means she would uh, see uh, the presence of Krishna, the appearance of Krishna. Swayameva spuratyadaha. Krishna would appear and disappear in front of her. So sometimes... She would, Keho uh, Nache, Keho Gai, Kaviraj Goswami says, sometimes Mahaprabhu used to sing in happiness and sometimes he used to lament in grief. Why Mahaprabhu would go through these pangs of opposite uh, moods? Because Radharani herself would sometimes be happy seeing Krishna, Spurti, Krishna's manifestation around her. And sometimes she would sob and cry when that would that Spurti would disappear. So externally, it would seem as if she's incoherent and she's speaking to herself. She's all by herself, all alone. And what is she even doing? The 11th Canto Bhagavatam describes that great souls, when they chant the names of Krishna, <laughs> 
their uh, dritta chitta their chitta becomes completely melted their consciousness becomes melted why jata anuraga because of their attachment to krishna and sometimes hasati sometimes they smile and sometimes uh, rodati sometimes she, they cry and gayati sometimes they sing and sometimes unmadava nrityati being completely oblivious to who's watching and who's not watching they dance like madmen so where are these characteristics coming in devotees it's coming from shrimati radharani she is the root of all devotion she is the mountain of devotion she is the ocean of devotion lavanya sara rasa sara sukhaika sare prabodhananda saraswati describes vai dagya sindhu anurag rasaika sindhu vatsalya sindhu atisandr kripaika sindhu lavanya sindhu amrita chavi roop sindhu shri radhika aspura tume ridhi keli sindhu Oh, Radharani, you are the ocean of attachment to Krishna. Please give me one drop from that ocean. Shri Pat Prabodhananda Saraswati prays. So Radharani would sometimes sit and speak and laugh and cry and joke and sometimes become shy and sometimes cry and lament all alone, right from childhood. So people would think what is happening, but she would have spurtis of Krishna. And sometimes she would sit all alone and she would cry and throw off her ornaments. What is the use of these ornaments on my body? if they don't decorate me enough to beautify me enough to attract krishna's attention so that i can get shama sundar the lord of my life so radharani would sometimes even fall at the feet of a sakhi and say i am going to the yamuna you go and fall at his feet so she would fall at the feet of a dear sakhi to say that i am going to the yamuna you go and fall at his feet which means fall at his feet and beg him to come and meet me and the banks of the yamuna so radharani's meeting with shama sundar was tried so many times and radharani right from childhood desired only the association of krishna ashlishyava padaratam pinashtumam adarshanan marma hatam karotu va yatha tatha va vidathatu lampato mat prananatastu saketana radharani would call out to krishna as prananath oh shri krishna you can reject me you can make me broken hearted by not being not being present before me or you can embrace me and give me pleasure so my lord i am yours mat prananathastu yatha tatha va vidadhatu lampato he lampat chudamani he shri krishna you can accept me or you can reject me you have two options but i have only one that is i have accepted you whole heartedly in my heart this is the mood of radharani the ultimate source of all divine ecstatic love so although right from childhood radharani had so much attachment to krishna but she could never meet krishna and she could never spend time with krishna the fulfillment of her inner desire never took place so up till this point this has never happened sometimes sitting alone you know she would laugh so loudly because krishna would also be sitting and he would also be laughing loudly but then suddenly that would disappear and what would remain is only her shadow as she is uh, as she is sitting or as she is standing and sometimes in very deep absorption she would see that shadow and she would see that this is a shama varana this is a dark form it's actually her own um, shadow on <laughs> it's it's her own chaya her own shadow but uh, but she would think that this dark form is actually shama sundar and although she's sitting or sometimes she's standing and she's seeing that this form is following her she would jump to grab this form with her hands and to embrace this form thinking that this is krishna but she would never find because that was radharani uh, ex- that was radharani's expression of her very very deep attachment to krishna and sometimes she would talk to herself <laughs> as if she's having conversations with krishna and rupa goswami gives very very beautiful descriptions of all this and she would call krishna hey drishta drishta Uh, Rupa Goswami describes there are four different categories of uh, lovers <laughs> in in his in his work. He says one is anukul, which means he is very loyal to his beloved. When the hero meets the heroine, he is he is anukul, anukul le bhavena, which means he is very he is he is completely loyal and chaste to only that person. <laughs> the second is uh, he who has dakshin bhav, which means he is meeting uh, the beloved. but in his mind he was he is thinking i wish i was with that person someone else than the person who is meeting this is the second the third is called shut shut means a cheater which means he would have been with someone else but then he tries to hide 
and give lies and cheat and say, no, no, actually, I was not there. They're all lying. I actually was here. That is shut. But the fourth is drishta. Drishta means uh, he was there and he has no problem accepting that he was there. But instead, he will give justifications as to why he was there. So uh, Radharani would call Krishna drishta, <laughs> not anukul. No, but you're going here, there, everywhere, and you're giving justifications. Dear devotees, later in this discussion, we will see why Krishna sometimes goes to different gopis. It's not that Krishna is um, um, uh, unchaste. No, he's very loyal. He's very chaste to Radharani. And only Radharani and only Radharani pervades through his consciousness. But however, Radharani, in her very deep uh, attachment and possessiveness to Krishna, says, Oh, Drishta, hmm? he who's found in the camp of Chandravali, the, the parrots of Vrinda Devi told me. And now you're coming and giving justification. <laughs> Don't shame me in front of my own Sakis. And this Radharani is speaking to herself all alone. And the Sakis are looking that this is the bhava of Radharani. That she is always absorbed in Krishna. Although she has not met Krishna like this. You know, before this Rasa dance. Before this mood of the Rasa Leela, the Rasa Karina. She has not got so much time with Krishna. But still her absorption right from childhood is such that uh, she's keeping her life, air, life and body, soul together just by remembrance of Krishna. Now what happened was after Radharani has so much absorption for Krishna and so much mood for Krishna, now on this night, Bhagavan Apita Ratri Sharadot Fulla Mallika Vikshantu Manas Chakra Yoga Maya Mupashrita on this night of Sharad Purnima, Krishna decided, I will fulfill that inner desire of Radharani. Manas Chakra. Krishna decided, yes, today is the day. Tonight is the night. I will meet with Srimati Radharani and I will fulfill her desire by Yoga Maya Mupashita, by taking shelter of her mood. You see, dear devotees, the verses of Bhagavatam are very, very deep. Very deep. Externally, it seems Bhagavan Apita Ratri Sharadot Fulla Mallika. Okay, on that night, Krishna decided as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But the depths that the Acharyas open up, Srila Prabhupada opens up in the Krishna book. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur opens up. Sanatan Goswami opens up. Without these Acharyas, how can we understand? How can we understand? So Krishna decided that that Radharani who has so much absorption, that Bhanu Nandini, Radharani is called Bhanu Nandini. Bhanu is another name for Vrisha Bhanu Maharaj, the father. And Nandini means Anandini, she who gives pleasure to the father as the daughter. So Bhanu Nandini is Radharani, who is uh, the daughter of Vrisha Bhanu Maharaj. So Krishna decided on the night of Sharad Purnima, I will play my flute and I will fulfill the innermost desire of Bhanu Nandini. So as Krishna played the flute and we described previously how the gopis madly, they rushed and ran towards Krishna. What happened? Even, even Srimati Radharani, even Bhanu Nandini, she abandoned everything and she started to run towards Shamasundar, towards Vamshivat as he's playing his flute. But what happened? Lalita Saki stopped Radharani. <laughs> Srila Rupa Goswami describes why. He says, Durte Vrajendra Tanaye Tanushtu Vamyam Ma Dakshina Bhava Kalankini Laghavaya Radhe Giram Shunu Hitam Iti Shikshayantim Devim Gunaisu Lalitam Lalitam Namam. Rupa Goswami describes our Lalita Saki is Anuradha. She is always uh, in protective mood of Radharani. So she does not want Radharani to be one of the gopis whom Krishna attends to. <laughs> Lalita Saki wants complete surrender at the lotus feet of Radharani. Lalita Saki wants Krishna to be with only Radharani. Sarva dharman paritya jemame kam sharanam braja. That is the words of Lalita Saki. She wants Krishna to be completely loyal and chaste and one-pointed possessive mode only with Radharani. Therefore, Rupa Goswami says, when Radharani tried to run, on the night of Sharad Purnima to be with Krishna, what happened? Durte Rajendra Tanaye Tanushushtu Vamyam. Ma Dakshina Bhava Kalankini. Lalita Saki is telling Radharani that you don't believe him by his flute sound. And don't be so submissive to Krishna. Ma Dakshina Bhava. You be very, develop this contrary mood that you will not look at Krishna. If Krishna comes and he, he offers apology and gives different sweet words and plays on his flute and charms with his beauty, you look to the other side. And if he comes here, you look to this side. And Lalita Saki teaches Radharani uh, different frowning techniques. <laughs> how she can, how Radharani can control our Shama Sundar. 
Krishna is controlling the whole creation. But Prabodhananda Saraswati says, Yo Brahma Rudra Shukanara the Bhishma Mukhehi, Alak Chitona Sahasa Purushasya Tasya, Sadhu Vashi Karana Churna Mananta Shaktim, Tam Radhika Charana Renu Manusmaram. Prabodhanan Saraswati describes that all the demigods, they are dying to get the, the, the foot dust of Sri Krishna. And Sri Krishna is um, rolling on the dust of Praja to get the dust of the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> so Lalita Saki says, this is your position here, Adhike. You be situated in your position of honor and dignity. You preserve your honor. Hey, Bhanu Nandini, you don't listen to this um, Vrajendra Tanaya, the Nanda Tanaya, the son of Nanda Maharaj. Don't give yourself so easily to him. You hold yourself, hold your dignity and honor and self-respect. And you will see, he will come and offer his obeisances to you. <laughs> so Lalita Saki is the one who yeah, <laughs> is, the, is the central figure of opposition uh, in the free meeting of Radha and Krishna. Of course, this is in the greatest mood of protectiveness in the great possessiveness towards Radha and Krishna. Rupa Goswami describes Radha Mukunda Padasambhava Karma Pindu Nirmancha Nopa Karani Kritadeha Laksham Uttunga Saurida Vishesha Vashat Pragalbham Devim Gunaisu Lalitam Lalitam Namami. Srila Rupa Goswami part describes that Lalita Devi is so surrendered to the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna that if one drop of sweat is seen on the sole of their feet, Lalita Sakhi is ready to uh, serve. Hmm. With one lakh, one hundred thousand bodies, she's ready to jump in to serve and take that one drop, perspiration drop from the feet of Radha Krishna away. This is this is the mood of Lalita Sakhi's deep love. So she held the hand of Radhika, Radharani, and said, You don't go, you wait. <laughs> Let him play the flute for everyone. Till the time the flute does not call, Radhe, you don't go. <laughs> not just the flute, even the flute player must come and meet you. Only then, Yoga Maya Mupashrita, then only, <laughs> although he is Bhagavan, he can take shelter of your mood. Apparently, what's happening there, we find in the Pranaya Geet, in the uh, Rajpanchadhyay, in the Bhagavatam, that where Krishna is playing the flute, the gopis have assembled. The gopis have assembled. And in that context, when the gopis have assembled, hearing the flute sound is the verse that we read. Krishna says, Oh, most fortunate ladies, welcome. Swagatam vo mahabhaga priyam kim karavani vaha vrajasyanam vrajasyanam ayam kaschit bruta gamana karana. You please tell me why you have come. Is everything okay in Braja? Krishna is asking the gopis. And after that, he says, Rajani esha gora rupa gora sattva niveshita pratiyata vrajam neha steyam strivi sumadhyama. Krishna tells the gopis in the next verse, that's the 19th verse. He says, Rajani esha gora rupa. It's already night. And gora rupa. Very, very beautifully, if you see, it has been described that. My my request is to notice if we can kindly mute our mics, that will really help. Yeah. So in the 19th verse, we see Krishna tells the gopis who have assembled. He says, Rajani, which means night, Esha, Esha Rajani, this night is Ghora Rupa. Appears to be very, very scary. Ghora. Ghora means, uh, we know the word um, Ghora. In the context of Putana, Shukdev Goswami says, um, Putana balaghatini. Kamsena prahita ghora putana balaghatini. Ghora means something that is very, very terrifying and, and horrifying, something scary. So Krishna says, Rajani esha ghora rupa. That, oh gopis, this night seems to be very scary. And ghora sattva niveshita. And there are wild animals here in this forest. There are snakes and carnivores here. So therefore, I don't think it's the right place for us to meet. Pratiyata Vrajam. Please go back to Vraja. Na iha steyam. Don't stay here. Hmm? Your stribihi madhyamaha. Sumadhyamaha. Your beautiful gopis. And I'm a brahmachari, Krishna says. Krishna says the night is terrifying. The place in the middle of the forest filled with wild animals is terrifying. You are beautiful gopis and I am a brahmachari. Therefore, as far as time, as far as place is concerned, as far as our uh, character is concerned, we should not meet. And 
you should go back pratiyata vrajam go back to your homes but shila vishnu chakravarti thakur gives a, a double meaning to this verse <laughs> he says krishna is saying the exact opposite because the verse is rajani esha ghora rupa so shila vishnu chakravarti thakur says the word esha ghora rupa can also be split as esha plus a ghora rupa that this night which in the first example we said is ghora rupa is very terrifying chakravarti pad says krishna is telling the gopis rajani esha tonight a ghora rupa is not very it's not terrifying at all because the moon is so beautiful and so soothing <laughs> and instead of ghora sattva niveshita the previous word is ghora rupa and the next line says ghora sattva niveshita which means the ghora can also be broken as a ghora which means this first of all the night is not very terrifying the moon is very beautiful full moon of sharad purnima and yet at the same time the animals in the forest look are aghora sattva they are all in sattva gun <laughs> all the deer and peacock and birds and all the sweet animals are outside therefore you don't have to worry the place is perfect and the animals are all perfect very conducive for this meeting and therefore uh, na pratiyat uh, vrajam please don't go back to vraja Iha steyam, please stay here. <laughs> Chakravarti Pad says Krishna externally has said, for those who are reading the Shrimad Bhagavatam and have not uh, developed very deep attachment to Radha Krishna, they will take this mood that Krishna is telling the gopis, you go back. But Chakravarti Pad says Krishna is, you know, he is a fantastic linguist. He is Bhagavan himself. So on the pretext of saying don't stay here, go back, he is saying don't go back but stay here. but to whom he is not telling all the gopis to stay the word used there is sumadhyama dear devotees the word sumadhyama has a, a couple of uh, good interpretations in this regard the first meaning of sumadhyama uh, is uh, someone if you see here it has been translated as slender waisted gopis so madhyama means the middle portion of the body and su means very beautiful sushtu so those women those gopis you are, so what krishna is trying to say is i am a brahmachari and you all are, you are, all of you are very beautiful so madhyama therefore you should not stay that is one meaning but the inner meaning where he says you should stay what does the word so madhyama mean we can find uh, in chaitanya charitamrit madhyalila chapter 14 there is a very beautiful discussion between swarup damodar goswami and shriman mahaprabhu the the hera panchami festival is the context 14 chapter madhya lila especially verse 149 150 151 those verses we can see there swarup damodar goswami describes what the word madhyama means according to the gopis the the classification of gopis shila uh, swarup damodar goswami describes that there are three categories of gopis one on the side of lalita sakhi who are very very fiery by nature next on the on the side of padma sakhi uh, one type of gopi who is very soft and innocent and naive but in the middle the madhyama gopi not pragalva not mukda not very uh, fiery and not very soft the middle section of gopis are the camp of shrimati radharani the gopis in the camp of shrimati radharani and that to krishna is not saying madhyama all of you stay he says su which means the best out of them that is shrimati radharani only you stay so for everyone else the other gopis krishna is giving the external meaning rajani esha ghora rupa it's the night is very dangerous and ghora sattva niveshita the animals are also very dangerous therefore pratiyata vrajam neha steyam strishu stribhi na sumadhyama therefore oh dear uh, gopis all of you you should go back you should not stay here because the night is very dangerous and uh, the forest is very dangerous so please kindly go back to your house but especially to madhyama which means uh, not the explosive category not the very soft category but the ones in the middle which is radharani's paksha the radha priya sakhis in that also su madhyama which means the very dear associates of radharani very few radharani and a few only all of you for you rajani esha adhora rupa night is not at all terrifying <laughs> the moon is shining beautifully full moon of sharad purnima is shining and at the same time aghora sattva niveshita the animals here all are also in sattva gun look the deer is very beautiful the peacock is so beautiful the parrots are also very beautiful 
and the swans are very beautiful. There is no fear at all. Therefore, na pratiyata brajam. All, all of you chosen ones, you don't go back. Iha, stay young. Please live here because you are su madhyama. You see, dear devotees, so su madhyama for the outside gopis, it means, oh, slender waisted gopis, I am a brahmachari. Uh, you are all beautiful. Please go back. But for those in Radharani's camp, our Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains very beautifully that this very specifically deals with uh, the, the, the Paksha, Radha Paksha, Sakhis. Also, Sripat Sanatan Goswami at this regard, he comments and he says, why was Krishna telling the gopis, you go back, you go back after playing the flute and calling them? Srila Sanatan Goswami describes because Krishna has only one name in his whole consciousness pervading. What is that name? Radha nama sudhara samrasaitum jivhastume vivala pada utat padakankita sucharatam vrindata vivitishu tad karmaiva kara karo turudayam tasya padam dhyayatam tad bhavo savata param bhavatume tad prananathe radhi. That Krishna has only one name for, you know, pervading through his whole consciousness, and that is Srimati Radharani's name. Jalpatya shrumukho haristadamritam radha iti me jivanam. These are the two syllables of Ra and Dha, which pervade and permeate throughout Krishna's consciousness. So Krishna, Sanatan Goswami describes, when the gopis came there, hearing Krishna's flute sound, Krishna was looking for Radharani. Until the time Radharani was not seen, Krishna is just telling the gopis, you know, because he has to stall the Rasalila. He has to stop. I mean, he, he can't start it without Radharani. So he's just saying, his, his eyes, Sanatan Goswami says, Krishna's eyes are looking for Bhananandini. Sham Sundar's eyes are looking for Bhanu Nandini. And he says, all of you go home. You know, night is very dangerous and the place is also very dangerous. You please don't be here. Go. Because Sanatan Goswami says his eyes are completely fixed on Bhanu Nandini, Srimati Radharani. And she's not to be seen because there Lalita Sakhi has held her. <laughs> so this is what is happening here. And this is what is happening there. And at that time, when Krishna tells the gopis, you go back. I heard it from the lips of my Guru Maharaj, something very beautiful. Um, he explained that Krishna at that time, he gave the gopis some instructions on Stri Dharma, that they should go back and be responsible and be with their husbands, etc. So my Guru Maharaj was explaining. At that time, the gopis responded that uh, you are telling us not to come into the forest, but you are the one who gave darshan to Dhruva because he was in the forest. You are the one who inspired Ambarish Maharaj to go into the forest. You are the one who delivered Bharat Maharaj because he went into the forest. Uh, you are the one who inspires Narada Muni to take everyone into the forest. And you appeared to Prahlad Maharaj. And Prahlad Maharaj's instruction to his father was, hmm, uh, <clears throat> leave this house and go into the forest and take shelter of Hari. And Sham, now you're telling us, not to come into the forest to find you. Prahlad Maharaj said, leave your home and go into the forest and take shelter of Hari. That's what we have done. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying that uh, this is correct, the incorrect. And my Guru Maharaj is saying, the gopis then looked at each other and said, he's giving us advice on Sri Dharma. But when he became Mohini, he became a Sri himself. Which family domestic uh, responsibilities did he take up? <laughs> Which father-in-law and mother-in-law and husband and children did he serve? He was running from one place to another. But when we become gopis, and you know, see, Mohini Murti was running. So with a nectar pot in her hand. So it's described that she had a nectar pot and then she was distributing. And at the same time, she was moving around. So the gopis are saying, we have the nectar pot of Krishna Prem and we are moving around in Sri Sharira, in our gopi swaru. And you're giving us advice on Sri Dharma. This is uh, what Srila Guru Maharaj is explaining. So at that time, the gopis told, Krishna in, in, in the pages of the Bhagavatam. Maivam vibor hati bhavan gaditum rishamsam santya jasarva vishayam tapapada mulam bhakta bhajasva durava grahamatya jasman devo yathadi purusho bhajate mumukhu. Oh, my Lord, O Sri Krishna, He Prananath, Hanatha, Ramana Prashta, Kwasi Kwasi Mahabhuja, Dasya Stekrapanayame, Sake Darshaya Sanidim. He Krishna, don't speak like this. We have. Santyajya Sarva Vishayams. We have given up the whole world. Why? Only to come to you. We don't have any personal agenda. We don't want any bliss or enjoyment in this world. My Lord. Um, for us, 
our life becomes zero null and void without you you see in this world someone who has been in married life let's say for 40 years 50 years and they have become old now and they lose their spouse suddenly and they become all alone what happens they feel that the whole world has become void completely vacant has the world actually become vacant? You see now the trees are there, the flowers, fruits, men, women, everyone. Everything is as usual. But the person who meant the world to them has disappeared. So now the world seems vacant. So similarly, where is this emotion coming from? It's coming from the gopis. That shunya itam jagat sarvam govinda virahe nami. Without govinda, without gopinath, the whole world is null and void. So therefore, he shama sundar, santajya sarva vishayam tavapada molam. To get to your lotus feet, the gopis said, we have given up all responsibilities in life. We are ready to go through millions and millions of hells and suffering only to be accepted by you. Please don't, uh, don't uh, send us back to our homes. Why do you hesitate to accept us like this? It's your nature to be compassionate. You accept anyone who comes to you. Putana came to you and you accepted. But we are coming to you and you're rejecting. Krishna, what is this? Where is the... the um, uh, the uniformity in your behavior. How, where is the predict? How can we predict the uniformity in your behavior? So Krishna, please accept us. Don't, don't, uh, don't show us away like this. Please, please accept us. And as the gopis were offering their prayers and offering their words in the Bhagavatam, it included all the gopis, including Chandravali. They were all begging to be accepted by uh, Krishna. They were all begging to be accepted by Krishna. But Krishna has no enthusiasm to listen to any of this because his heart is null and void. Shunya itam jagat sarvam. Radhika virahename. Without Srimati Radhika, without Radharani, Krishna has no enthusiasm to meet anybody or anyone anywhere. Krishna cannot live without Radharani. Therefore, our Jiva Goswami Pad has said, Krishna dehe stita radha. Radha dehe stito hari. Jeevane nidhane nityam radha. Krishna gatir mama. Nilam baradharo radha. Jeev Goswami Pad says the life of Radharani is Krishna and the life of Krishna Srimati Radharani and the life of the maidservant of Radha and Krishna is the, the union of Radha and Krishna to bring them together, to, to worship them as Yugal Swarup, to worship them as Radha and Krishna Yugala Milan, Radha Ramana, the, the beautiful form of Radha and Krishna. So they're all enthusiastic and crying for acceptance at the feet of Krishna. But Krishna is crying in his heart to be accepted by Srimati Radharani. He has no enthusiasm. He cannot think of anybody except Radharani. Let us not think that Radharani has more love than any other gopi. We should not think like that. Did I say something wrong? Hmm? Did we say that Radharani has, we should not think that Radharani has more love than any other gopi? Well, the fact is, she has more love than all the gopis put together. So we should not say that Radharani has more love than any specific gopi, like Chandravali. Well, it's a fact that she has more love than all the gopis put together in past, present and future. Without Radharani, there is no question of having any pastime. Krishna cannot exist without Radharani. So Krishna in his heart he was feeling this very great separation. And as the gopis were begging Krishna to be accepted, Krishna told the gopis in the words of our acharyas. Krishna said, you are longing to be accepted by me, but my heart longs for the association of Bhanu Nandini, the daughter of Bhanu Maharaj. So please make a plan by which Radharani can become the jewel decorating uh, the necklace of my life. You please make arrangement that Radharani, I can have darshan of Radharani, and then I will fulfill all your desires. I will accept your service. I will not reject you if you give me the darshan of Srimati Radharani. So now there was a gopi conference. All the gopis came together <laughs> and they sat together. They were thinking how to bring Radharani here for the pleasure of Sham Sundar. So they decided we will make a messenger. We'll have a dut sakhi. Dut sakhi means a, a duty <laughs> of, of a female messenger. So they picked a messenger and said, go and find Srimati Radharani and give her the following messages. They whispered a few emotions in her ear and she went around in the hall of Raj Mandal, calling out to the name of Radharani. Hey, Sri Radhe! Oh, Radhe! Hey, Radhike! And this Dut Sakhi, she went around calling out to Radharani. And wherever there is the name of Radha and Krishna, the form will appear. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in Harinam Chintamani and Bhajan Rahasya, 
that when the name is chanted purely with emotions, the form will appear in the heart at the level of Nishtha and Ruchi. So this Sakhi was calling out with so much emotion that very soon she was driven by Yoga Maya to the Kunj where Radharani was sitting. So Radharani was sitting in a Kunj, she was sitting in a garden and she was weeping in separation from Krishna. She was crying in complete separation that how is it that Sham Sundar, he has played the flute and he has called all the gopis and I also could have gone, but Lalita Sakhi has stopped me. I know she is my uh, well-wisher, she is my superior, but at the same time, I'm torn between emotions. I want to fulfill Lalita Sakhi's desire to, to <laughs> ma dakshina bhava, not to be submissive, but to be contrary and to hold my honor and dignity. But at the same time, my heart melts hearing the flute sound of Sri Sham Sundar. So she was weeping and crying in separation from Krishna in a kunj. And there Krishna is weeping and crying in separation from Bhanu Nandini as all the gopis are waiting. Hmm? The rasa has not begun because Raseshwari Radharani is disappearing. So the messenger came and humbly said, Oh, dear Jewel, who has appeared in the palace of Prashabhanu Maharaj. Oh, Bhanu Nandini, it is a very great fortune that you have appeared in the, in, in, amidst Prashabhasis like us, in, in the purview, in the domain of our sense perception, the Jewel has appeared as Srimati Radhika. Oh, Radharani, oh, I offer my obeisances unto you. So the Dut Saki entered the Kunj with this obeisance. And Radharani was very shy. She was looking down. So at that time, the Dut Saki started offering transcendental flattery. Now they're all truth. In this world, you can flatter someone. But in the spiritual world or in pastimes of Radha and Krishna, wherever there is flattery, that's truth. So it's not flattery. It's transcendental flattery because it's flattery, but it's not on the basis of falsity. It's on the basis of transcendental reality. So then when Radharani was so shy, looking down with her face down, the, the Saki came and she said, Hey Radhike, oh Bhanu Nandini, please raise your head and shower me with your glance. Oh Bhanu Nandini, great munis, great sages, great demigods will become my maidservant <laughs> if I become the recipient of your sidelong glance. That is the power potency of your glance. You don't even have to glance like this. Hmm? You just have to raise your head a bit and glance from the corner of your eyes. And all the great controllers of this world, including Krishna, will become my maidservant. Yad king karishu bahusha khaluka akuvani nityam parasya purushasya shikhanda maule tasya kada rasanidhe brushabhanu jaya tad keli kunja bhavanangana marjanisya. Great, great controllers will be at my feet only if I become the recipient of your glance. Oh Radharani, this is the power potency of your position. Hey Radhe, the Dut Saki started speaking. Millions of gopis, including Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, the consort of Vishnu, they all aspire to get the association of one young, beautiful, transcendently sweet, very attractive, handsome, uh, blue sapphire stone-like boy in Braja. <laughs> there was one boy. He's the Ujjwala Nilamani. He's the blue sapphire stone. Very effulgent, self-effulgent stone in Braj. And all the millions of gopis, including Lakshmi, they all aspire the association of that Ujjwala Nilamani, that blue sapphire stone. All want him. All want to serve him. But they've all failed to get his association. Why? Because he's a hungry bumblebee who is just starving, who starved, searching for uh, the honey of the lotus of your lotus feet. They all want to serve him. They want to associate with him. They want to achieve him. But oh Radha, oh Bhanu Nandini, oh Srimati Radharani, that blue sapphire stone of Braj, still the name has not been pronounced, that, that blue sapphire stone of Braj, he's like a hungry bumblebee who is starving. He wants to find the lotus of your lotus feet and the nectar in that, the service of your lotus feet. So therefore, this is the very deep meaning of Bhagavan Api. Although he is uh, someone who is chased by even the demigods, what is he doing? Yoga Maya Mupashita. He desires to take shelter of your lotus feet. Hmm? Now Radharani gets even more interested to hear, oh, this is something very, very exciting that this Sakhi is speaking. So let me hear more. So the messenger started saying, hey, Bhanu Nandini, oh Radharani, I am going to tell you some secrets. 
even scriptures and great sages don't understand and don't know. They cannot even explain. They cannot even fathom even an atom of the secret. So please hear very attentively. I'm going to tell you more about this bluish boy, <laughs> this bluish black complexioned Shama Varuna boy in Braja. Hey Radhike. He is made up of unlimited Shringar Rasa. He's made of very sweet Madhurya mood. And his name is Sri Krishna. He's the all attractive, handsome blue sapphire stone in the necklace of Brindavan. He never goes to Lakshmi Devi. He has so many, even the, the wives of the goddesses, demigoddess, uh, the, the wives of the demigods, which means the demigoddesses, they also fall off their plane in beauty, uh, in att being attracted to his beauty. But, oh Radha, oh Bhanu Nandini, hey Radhe, hmm? he does not go to any Lakshmi, he does not go to any wife of any demigod. He is just wandering from one uh, one lane to another and one gully to another in Brajmanda. He's looking one field after another. He's just wandering. So people may think he's wandering because he's a cowherd boy. But oh, Bhanu Nandini, I want to tell you the reality. He is wandering as his eyes are only looking for you. He has very deep affection for you, hey Radhe. Hmm? He's often chastised. He's often misunderstood uh, by everyone, thinking that he's very unchaste, that he's going from one gopi to another, one kunch to another. You remember in the start of the class, we were mentioning this. But here the messenger very beautifully explains. Hey, Bhanu Nandini, Krishna's not unchaste. He is not, uh, not being loyal to you. He goes from one kunj to another searching for you. He goes very close to every gopi because he's so infatuated by you. He's so mesmerized and so attracted by your beauty, O Radharani, that whichever gopi he sees, he only sees your face on her neck. <laughs> so he goes very close to the gopi. And then he realizes, no, 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 no. This is not my Radharani. And he de deserts her. He, he um, rejects her. Then he goes to another kunj and another gopi and he looks around. So Krishna is not uh, uh, disloyal or he's not unchaste. He, he going from one kunj to another is his, it's an expression, is the sign of his deep, unparalleled, unfathomable, inconceivable, unbelievable love for you, O Radharani. All the banks, all the boundaries are broken by the flood of his love for you. So therefore, please don't misunderstand him. Oh, Bhanu Nandini, do you remember sometimes there have been astrologers, and sometimes there have been priests who have come and told Jatila Devi, your mother-in-law, looking at your chart, that there are some planetary positions which are off and some pujas have to be done and some jewels have to be accepted as a ring, etc. Do you remember? Oh, that priest, that astrologer is no one but Madhu Mangal, Sri Krishna's best friend. And who is the person who ultimately comes and gives you the ring, uh, the jewel ring on your ring finger so that all the planetary uh, movements are controlled and all the uh, ill effects are taken away. That is no one. That's not the giver of the jewel. That is the self-effulgent jewel himself. That is the Ujjwala Nilamani Sri Krishna. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, this is how much, oh Radhike, you may have not seen, but this is how much he works behind your back to, uh, to achieve you and your service in life. Sometimes you may see that you, you find a flute in the forest, or sometimes you find a flute in the kunj, or sometimes you find a, a flute in the field, or sometimes you even found a flute in the Yamuna. And you may pick up the flute and remember Krishna. But it's not that he has forgotten, as you think he may have sometimes forgotten his flute. No, hey Radhe, he hides behind the bushes and just glances at you as you are finding his flute. Oh, Bhanu Nandini, how much affection you have for him. And that is how much affection he has for you. Sometimes you cannot imagine. He goes to another extreme. Sometimes he even learns some magic spells so that he can attract your heart. If things don't work in the, in the, in the same way, he goes the insane route. But it's ultimately only to attract your heart. Oh, Radhike, sometimes do you remember you see beautiful goddesses in the middle of the forest? Hmm? You, you get attracted to beautiful celestial well-dressed up goddesses in the middle of the forest. Who do you think that was? That was Krishna who was dressed up <laughs> like a goddess only to attract your attention. Hey, Radhe. Now these secrets that I'm revealing to you are the deepest secrets found in 
um, in, in Radha and Krishna's pastimes, in Braj Mandal, even the Shastras don't reach there. Even the Sadhus don't reach there. But I'm telling you all these secrets. Hey, Radhe. Do you remember sometimes you have ghost attacks in the forest? You see ghosts and you get scared and you start running away. And out of nowhere, Krishna comes there and he says, don't worry, I will protect you. Who do you think was the ghost? It was Krishna who became the ghost there to scare you so that when you run the other way, he leaves from a different path and intercepts your path only to get your attention. Oh, Radharani, hey, Bhanu Nandini, even after so many attempts, you and he have not met. And he is as dissatisfied and as, um, as much burning in his heart in separation from you, as much as you are crying and weeping and burning in separation from him. Therefore, he longs for your association as you long for his association. Radha Krishna Eka Atma Dui Dehadhari Anyonya Vilasarasa Aswadanakari. Kaviraj Goswami says there is no difference between Radharani and Krishna. Radha Purna Shakti Krishna Purna Shakti Man Dui Vastu Bheda Nahi Shastra Praman Ladhine Rasar Prem Prem Sara Bhav Bhavera Maha Parama Kashta Nama Mahabhav Mahabhava Swarupa Shri Radha Thakurani Sarva Guna Kani Krishna Kanta Shiromani. Kaviraj Goswami has very beautifully described. That Radha and Krishna's love for each other is inconceivable because it's the energy. Shakti, Shakti, Matayor, Abhedaha. The Shakti and the Shakti Man, the energy and the energetic, which are inseparables. They are separated in Braja. So their longing to be together is the root of all love that we see in this world. His Holiness Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj on one Radhashtami class I remember mentioned that the love that Radharani has for Krishna and the love that Krishna has for Radharani is, Maharaj said, is the root of all love that exists in all creatures, in all animals, in all insects, in all trees, in all birds, in all the aquatics, in all human beings, in all the celestial demigods. Wherever there is some longing, wherever there is some affection, wherever there is some absorption, attachment, attraction, attention, it's all finding its ultimate root in Radha and Krishna's mutual longing to be with each other. So now the Sakhi continued speaking further as she's speaking to uh, Srimati Radharani. She's saying, <clears throat> Oh Radharani, I will tell you something very interesting. Very, very interesting. He once slept under a Kadamba tree. He slept under a Kadamba tree. Now this Dut Sakhi is speaking to Radharani in continuation. Once he slept under a Kadamba tree, this Krishna, I'm telling you how much he loves you, O Bhanu Nandani. Once he slept under a Kadamba tree in Braj and you appeared to him in his dream and you were so shy and you told him, hey, Prananath, you are playing your flute and inviting all the gopis, but I only desire your association as much as you desire my association. Then why are you having so many gopis around? And this is what you were speaking to him. And he saw your darshan in his dream. And he told you in his dream, Hey Radhike, I, my flute actually calls only your name. But what to do? These gopis are coming. <laughs> I, I didn't call them. What can I do? I didn't call them. And ultimately when they come also, Hey Radhike, the purpose of their presence is only so that they will make our dancing more beautiful. When you and I dance on the night of Sharad Purnima, the gopis who have assembled, they can go around in circles and they can beautify like fire flames, beautify the main fire. Sometimes you can see the sparks, the fire flames, fire sparks. They beautify the main fire more. So similarly, in the dream, Krishna is speaking to Bhanu Nandini, to Radharani. And this Dut Saki is telling Radharani that in the dream he was speaking, he saw you and he was saying, Hey Radhike, I don't invite these gopis. I, my flute only sings your name. But uh, these gopis are coming and therefore I cannot, uh, I cannot reject them. I, I didn't invite them. It's not my fault. But at the same time, I engage them in singing and dancing to beautify our dance. And in this uh, dream, uh, Krishna was falling on his knees and begging, Hey Radhike, please give me your darshan in reality, in reality, in reality. And the dream broke. And as Krishna woke up, he looked at the Kadamba tree. And he became so happy because he's dreamt this under a wish-fulfilling tree in Vrindavan, which means his desires will be very soon fulfilled on the power of the wish-fulfilling trees of Braja. 
So he woke up and he realized it's a Kalpa Vriksha. And he was rolling in the dust of Braja. And from that day, he's only thinking of you, O Bhanunandani. He roams in Braja chanting your names. And today, O Bhanunandani, today the unbelievable has happened. His dream is almost on the brink of fulfillment. He has played his flute and all the gopis have come there. But he expressed openly his love for you by telling all the gopis that uh, I, I, I'm waiting for the presence of the daughter of Prashabhanu Maharaj. Oh, Radharani, I want to tell you very honestly, although he is present there with all the gopis, his tongue is only chanting your name. They are talking to him, but he can't hear them. They are looking at him, but he can see them. They are uh, communicating to him, but he doesn't even acknowledge their presence. The Dut Saki is telling Radharani, they are all talking, but he's only saying, Kwasi, Preyasi, Kwasi, Preyasi, Kwasi, Preyasi, Hey Preyasi, Hey Radharani, Hey Bhanunandani, Kwasi, where are you? Oh, where are you? Oh, where are you? He keeps saying this, and he sometimes looks around. The gopis are here, but he's looking around. Whether you're hiding behind a tree or hiding behind a bush, oh Radhike, even Chandravali is begging for acceptance, but in his heart, he's begging only to be accepted by you. He's not eating, he's not drinking, no emotions, even life, air, even his breathing has slowed down. And because he is the, the heartbeat of Braj Mandal, he is not breathing, he is not eating or sleeping or drinking. Even the birds are not eating, sleeping, or drinking. He is crying. And the only emotion we can see in Krishna is <sighs> very deep sigh. So that's the emotion that's permeate, per, permeating and pervading through the whole of Braj Mandal. So he is the life of all lives. But you are the life of that Krishna. His face is dripping with tears and separation from you. Hey, Radhike, even birds and animals are crying. Pashu paki jure paashana vidare shuni jar guna gatha. Looking at the, the beautiful uh, love of Krishna that he has for Radharani. Even birds and animals are crying and even stones are melting. Hey, Radhike, hey, Bhanu Nandani, how can I tell you? Even trees and creepers are embracing each other and crying that when, oh, when will Radha and Krishna be united in Braja? Even flowers are crying and they're falling off the tree. Even the rocks of Giriraj go over them are melting. Hey, hey, Radhike, hey, Bhanu Nandini, hey, Radhe. Even Yamuna is over flooded, not just with her, with her own water, but even with the tears of divine ecstatic love. Therefore, oh, Radharani, Please, at once, you come and bring supreme good fortune in the life of Sri Krishna. So Radharani was very excited. Dear devotees, we are towards the end of the story. Radharani was very excited to hear this Dut Sakhi because the last words of the Dut Sakhi were, Hey, Bhanu Nandini, please hold my hand and I will take you to your Prananath. I will take you to the banks of the Yamuna at Bamshivat under the Kadamba tree on this full moon night of Sharad Purnima where Sham Sundar is waiting for you. I will be the medium. I will take you there. Hey Radhike, please come. And as Bhanu Nandini Srimati Radharani gets ready, Lalita Sakhi stands up. And she looks at this Sakhi. <laughs> and Lalita Sakhi says, Hey Sundari, we have heard enough about the qualities of your Krishna. You should go and tell about him to someone who doesn't know about him. We know him very well. We know him in and out. We know him of all his tricks. Hmm? So you please leave the kunj right now. What's the proof that uh, this is also not one of his tricks? We know him. He's very crooked, says Lalita Sakhi. <laughs> my condition is my Radharani is not going to be one of the gopis. She's not going to be uh, one of the lot. She's the queen. So my condition is, let him give up everything, let him give up everyone, let him come here in complete surrender, in loyalty and chastity to Srimati Radharani. And if he can promise this, then I will give Radharani's hand to him. And if he can promise this, then I will bless him, that may he never get Radharani. <laughs> and may Radharani forget him. So Lalita Saki gets very um, <laughs> combustible. She's almost ready to explode. She said, this is my ultimate policy. This is what I want. So the messenger built up so much and explained to Radharani. But 
everything went in vain just by a couple of words of Lalita Sakhi. She's so powerful. The Dut Sakhi went back and told Krishna, oh, everything has failed. I built up and I spoke so much, but Lalita Sakhi is very powerful. Krishna said, yes, oh, yes. She is very, very powerful. <laughs> She's the one who can even send me out of the kunj. So Krishna decided now what to do. Even the Dut Sakhi has failed. Now there's only one way. When everyone else is failing, there's only one person who doesn't fail, and that's me. So what did Krishna do? He dressed himself as a gopi. Dear devotees, Sham became Shama Sakhi. And he parted his hair very nicely. He had nice sindur and nice long earrings. And he looked very attractive like a, a gopi, <laughs> like a Shama Sakhi. But the only thing is, this is blue complexion, Shama Sakhi. In a bluish black complexion, very, very beautiful. Krishna in a male form himself is very beautiful. Imagine Krishna takes a feminine form. How beautiful. And he went to the kunj, searching for Radharani, chanting the names of Radharani. He went from one kunj to another, searching for Radharani, and finally came to the point. And when he looked, his eyes met at the very beautiful golden complexion, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrushabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye. When the eyes of Shama Sakhi looked at, had darshan of the beautiful form of Srimati, uh, Radhika, Radharani, Bhanu Nandini. Then looking at Radharani, he offered obeisances. He, she offered obeisances. Uh, bowed down and took the dust from the lotus feet of Radharani on his or her head. His meaning Krishna, her meaning Shamasaki. And then Shamasaki started speaking. Oh, Bhanu Nandini, hey Radhe, you are so beautiful that when you dance, even Lakshmi and Narayan, they faint in happiness. They also have a higher limit, the upper threshold, how much happiness they can hold. But when they see you sing and dance just by your form, by your sweet expertise in Nritya Kala, Sat Gunali Mandita, Prema Ramya Rupa Vesha Sat Gunali Mandita. Kaviraj Goswami has described in his Radhika Ashtakam that Radharani is... Uh, um, Rasa, Lasya, Hasya, Gita, Narma, in cutting jokes, in singing, in dancing, in all of this Rasa Krita and all of the wonderful expertise, the expert arts and the, the art forms and, and different skills and talents and capabilities. Radharani is unparalleled. So here Shama Saki started saying, even Lakshmi and Narayan faint in joy because they can't hold how much joy is there just having your darshan. Shama Saki said, Hey, Bhanu Nandini, who will not desire to be the maidservant at your lotus feet lifetime after lifetime? Padab Jayor Tava Vina Varadasya Meva Nanyat Kadapi Samaye Kila Devi Ache Sakya Yate Mama Namostu Namostu Nityam Dasya Yate Mama Rasostu Rasostu Satya. Hey Radharani, how fortunate am I, said Shama Saki. I'm, I was just walking around doing service for Krishna and, and just by chance I came here. Please don't think I'm coming, Shama Saki is saying. Please don't think I'm coming from Krishna side. No, no, no. I'm not doing that. Uh, well, and even if I am, uh, just by looking at your beauty, I'm not on his side. I'm on your side. But I want to tell you the fact. I just It's just coincidence. I was just doing some chores and coming here for some service, collecting some flowers for Krishna. And lo and behold, I stepped into this kunj and I found Kajan Vichinvan Napi Divya Ratnam Swamin Kritar Thosmi Varam Nayache. Like Dhruva Maharaj. He came to search for liberation. And some enjoyment, but he saw the darshan of Narayan in the forest. So similarly, I came to do some service for Krishna, but then I found this Chintamani, this uh, Bhanu Nandini, very beautiful touchstone of Braja. So don't care about him. Don't don't think that he's sending me and I'm acting on his behalf. No, not like that. I'm I just I just coincidentally just happened to be here. And then just by looking at you, I have forgotten everything and everyone. I have forgotten even my own identity. I don't even know who I am. But let me tell you what I saw today. I'm, I'm just telling you something here, Radhika. I saw Krishna. And he was speaking as if you were there. He was speaking in thin air. He was, he was all alone. But he was speaking in thin air and saying, Oh, Bhanu Nandini. Hey, Radharani. You are so merciful by nature. Then why are you angry with me? I play the flutes, uh, the flute hmm, to call you. Dear Radharani, I don't play the flute to call the gopis. In fact, let me tell you a truth today, said Krishna all alone. He said, it is not my fault. This flute 
is actually on your side. So this flute naturally keeps singing your names and keeps glorifying you. And because this flute naturally keeps singing, I don't play the flute. It naturally keeps singing your names and glories. This is why I keep the flute very close to me. So please don't feel jealous about the flute. This flute, keeping the flute close to me is an expression of me wanting your association and your seva. And oh, Radhika, do you know, I saw you in my dream and I was so happy that I woke up under the Kalpavriksha tree and I saw you in the dream and you were giving your association to me. Shama Saki is saying, Krishna is speaking all alone that he saw in the dream. <laughs> the presence of Radharani. Shama Saki says, he was speaking that I saw you in my dream and I was so happy this all happened under a Kalpavriksha tree, which means sure, definitely, slowly but surely, I will have, that day will come when I will have your darshan. Hey Radhike, from the time that dream has broken, whether in wake state or in a sleep state, I can only see you. And I'm wandering from one field to another like a madman. This flute, which is glorifying you, is my Vamshi Priya Sakhi, because it is actually connecting you and me. So when I am playing the flute on the banks of uh, the Yamuna at Vamshi Vat, it is actually my expression of love for you. But these gopis are coming and I'm engaging them in the service. So please don't listen to rumors. Don't listen to um, all the, uh, the false that Lalita Saki fills in your ears. Krishna is speaking this to Radharani in thin air. This is what Shama Saki is saying in the Kunj. That Krishna is saying, you trust me. Don't listen to the words of Lalita Saki. She's filling your ears with unnecessary faults of mine. But I don't have all these faults. As Shama Saki is saying like this, Radharani's eyes are filling up with tears. Because she, in in seclusion, being alone, she has always cried and wept for Krishna. And Krishna now is crying and weeping in separation from Radharani. And at that time, Shama Saki tells Radharani, tells Bhanu Nandini, Hey Radhike, after hearing all this, if you feel you can go to him at once and relieve the fire of his separation from you. But if not, that's fine. That's fine. If you want to go, I can take you to him. But if you don't want to, that's fine. But I have decided, said Shama Saki, I have decided as far as I am concerned, I am going to be with you. I am not going to leave your association. <laughs> very Krishna is very brilliantly putting the point that if you want, I can take you to Krishna. If no, no problem, you be here. But as far as I am concerned, I will be with you. Which means if you want to go, I will take you to him. But if you don't want to go, I will be with you. <laughs> At this point, all the Sakis are silent with their head down because they don't know who the Shama Saki is. But they are listening. And Radharani starts crying and says, Oh, Shama Saki, you speak so sweetly. I have never seen you. Which village are you from? Where do you come from? Who are your parents? How is it that Providence has never got the meeting of you and me? You are so beautiful. In fact, your face is something which is astonishingly beautiful. And I think I have seen this face somewhere. And Shama Saki starts hiding the face because now she knows she's very <laughs> close to being caught. So Radharani says, oh, yes, I remembered. Your face reminds me of the Ujjwala Nilamani, the blue sapphire stone of Braja. That is Sri Krishna. I have been meditating on Krishna so much. Maybe your face is not blue. Maybe your face is not bluish black. But because I've been meditating on Sham so much, maybe that meditation, is super, that color is superimposing on the color of your complexion. I wish I can find Sham, but no problem. I found Shama Saki, said Radharani. Hey, Shama Saki, Radharani with tears said, thank you so much for bringing this message. I don't know how I can repay you, but I have one favor that I, can, I would like to ask you. Please don't refuse. I don't think I can meet Krishna, but you can do a favor for me. Your form and your face and your speech and your eyes, your beauty resembles Krishna very, very closely. Please do me a favor. Can you put on a peacock feather? And can you stand playing on the flute? Let me see your form and that will pacify my heart. And even before Shama Saki could say something, Radharani said, this will give so much joy to me. Please do this for me. And Vita, before Shama Saki could tuck in a peacock feather and play on the flute, Radharani jumped and embraced Shama Saki and said, I have found such a nice friend. And Shama Saki also embraced Radharani. And when Radharani got embraced by Shama Saki, 
she felt now this experience is something very, 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 very similar. So she pushed Shamasaki and said, who are you? And Shamasaki removed her makeup and said, hey, Radhike, it is me. It is Sham. And at that time, Radharani smiled and she said, Nyatam, Nyatam, Maya Nyatam, which means I knew it was you. <laughs> I knew, oh, Sham, it was you. What does that mean? Hmm? The Sakis all started clapping and said, Oh, Sham, you thought you were tricking Radharani by becoming Shama Saki. But Radharani had already recognized that you are not Shama Saki, but you're actually uh, Shama Sundar. So you are very proud of your uh, trickery, of your cheating uh, prowess. So you thought you could cheat Radharani by covering a Shama Saki and coming, and you will not be spotted. But Radharani is one notch higher. She recognized that you were Shyam Sundar. And that is why she was speaking so sweetly to you. And now when Radha and Krishna came together this on the full moon night of Sharad Purima, all the gopis were at Vamshi were searching for Krishna. But Krishna is here in the Kunj on the night of Sharad Purima with Radharani and the Sumadhyama, the very close associates of Radharani. And at that time, the Sakis are singing. Jaya Jaya Radha Krishna Yugala Milan Arati Korove Tadi Sakhi Gan Jaya Jaya Radha Krishna Yugala Milan Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, All glories, all glories to the transcendental meeting of Radha and Krishna where they are kept on the Ratna Vedi, the transcendental throne and Lalita Sakhi is doing the first Arati. So dear devotees, this is a transcendental description of the beautiful meeting of Radha and Krishna on the night of Sharad Purnima. So Adhik Mas represents Krishna and Kartik Mas represents Radharani and Sharad Purnima is actually the meeting of Radha and Krishna. And this is the ultimate source of all pleasure, of all transcendental joy, of truth, of eternal, unending, everlasting bliss. This is what we, uh, as the eternal servants of Radha and Krishna, we should yearn and aspire for. But when we don't get that divine sweetness, we go from door to door uh, in this world, begging for happiness, which we don't get lifetime after lifetime. So in this human form of life, in the association of devotees, in the Gaudiya version of Parampara, we should take maximum advantage, especially Kartik Mas is coming up and today's very auspicious Sharad Purnima Tithi, uh, the day of the Rasa dance, the meeting of Radha and Krishna in the season of autumn in Braja. So let us pray to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that what he came to give us, that is attachment to Radha and Krishna through the Guru Parampara, by the teachings of the Goswamis, by, pres as the, uh, by the presentation of the Acharyas by, uh, headed by Srila Prabhupada. Let us seek and try to catch these drops of pearls and drops of nectar in our heart and make our life sublime. Sorry for going over time, but I hope all of you will forgive me. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much for wonderful class Prabhu. Very nice pastime. Thank you so much Prabhu. Do you have time to take questions Prabhuji? Since it's already over time, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mataji, maybe we can we can have it later. Yeah, yeah, sure, Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for your uh, enlightening class today. And we are very grateful to you, Prabhu. We look forward for your association again in future. We'll end the call here, paying obeisances to Prabhuji and all the devotees. Vancha Kalpata Rupyasha, Krupa Sindhu Evacha, Patita Nam Pavane, Bio Vaishnava Bio Namunama, Grand Rashimar Bhagatam Ki Jai Kopi ki ki jai, Shri La Prabhupada ki jai, He is great, Amrinda Prabhuji ki jai. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji, for your association. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji. Shamagori Mataji. Yeah, yes, Mataji. We are having our parikrama, right? Parikrama. If devotees are willing to stay, then it's okay. But it's already, you know.